Okay, let's uh, let's pray. Father God, we we come before you this morning. Lord, we thank you for the the weekend that has gone by. We thank you for the rest, for the refreshing. Father God, we just want to thank you for your word, for your work uh, in our hearts, Lord. And um, Father God, we thank you for ministering to us through your word and through your spirit, Lord. We we thank you, Master. Father God, we we just want to thank you for this week ahead. Uh, for this new week, and uh, we thank you for all the possibilities. We thank you for all the, um, Lord, everything that you have in store for us, Lord. And uh, I just pray that each one of us, God, that we will uh, we will be so diligent to, Lord, discover and to, Lord, move in the direction that you're pointing us to, and Lord, may we uh, discover the things that you have in store for us, Lord, and the things that you're leading us into, God, we pray that we'll be uh, diligent to just follow you. Yes, Lord, we we come at this week into your mighty hands, Father God. We thank you that you've already gone before us. You've prepared Lord, certain things for us, God. And so, God, we, and as we follow you, God, we do so with willing hearts, oh, Father God. Um, yeah, Sorry. Um, so, um, God, we, we just do so with willing hearts. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Master. We pray that, um, Lord, you will uh, empower us to do whatever you've called us to do this coming week. Um, we just commit everything into your mighty hands. So, um, you know, if you have some uh, big things to uh, carry out this week, maybe some tasks that need to be done this week. Um, um, can we just place it before the Lord? Uh, let's just place it before the Lord and say, oh God, we come at this and, um, and we thank you for the ideas. We thank you for the empowerment. Um, yeah, I just want to read from Proverbs. Um, Yeah, um, Proverbs 16 and verse 3, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Like that's the promise. So let's just commit, um, you know, everything big, small, whatever tasks that need to be done. Maybe you've got a list of things to do. Maybe there's one big thing to do. Um, you know, whatever it is, let's commit it to the Lord. And the promise from the Lord is that, uh, you know, he will establish our thoughts. So right at the thought level, he'll make it strong. Um, whatever, you know, uh, ideas, whatever, he'll establish it. And our thoughts will drive our actions. So um, so we're grateful to the Lord for that. So let's commit it to the Lord, right? So let's just place it before him. Father God, we come before you and we and we commit, Lord, everything that we need to do, God. Just put it in, our, in your hands and, and say, oh God, that you would take care, that you would protect, that you would... Um, Ensure that it's, Lord, it's it's done well, God. That you will enable us, God. Um, yes, Lord, lead us, God. Guide us, God. And um, yes, Lord, Father, we we ask that uh, you will establish your thoughts, Lord. Establish our thoughts, God. Even as you promised in your word, that our thoughts will be established, made firm, made strong, um, so that we might uh, carry out every task, Lord that our actions will be firm and strong um, and clear, Lord, even as you give clarity to our thoughts, oh God. Yes, Master, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Praise God. Um, hey, morning. Uh, welcome those of you who joined in a little um, tuned in late. Yeah, okay. Um, so we'll have um, uh, we'll just go through um, some of the material that uh, you know uh, that we uh, from our notes. Right, we're on page forty-one. If you're following in the notes, um, some keys to uh, effective preaching. Okay. Um, uh, the section before that talks about uh, uh, ten things, ten simple steps for preaching confidently or speaking confidently. It's more from a public speaking 
um, you know, perspective. It's by Alan Morton, a known, uh, at least he was. I, I'm not sure if he's still there. 2005, actually, is when this article came out. And uh, um, so some very uh, practical uh, um, steps or practical uh, hacks to to public speaking. You can go through that on your own. But I just wanted to uh, go through the next section, which is keys to effective preaching. Uh, some of the things uh, for us to keep in mind right um see what what we uh, what happens is uh, many times we get into the flow of things and we 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 prepare and and you know get into the things but then some of these basic things some of these fundamentals are are quite important you know um uh, some of these basic um or the first steps right are very very important and uh, sometimes it we forget right and uh, i remember playing um you know, badminton uh, over the weekend, uh, and I mean, not this weekend, one of the weekends. And then I remember uh, my t- uh, telling me, I used to play tennis when I was in school. And uh, um, so uh, my tennis coach telling me, you know, after you played the shot, you know, come back to your position, come back to the ready position. You know, you played it. Don't just keep admiring how beautifully you hit the you know, ball over the net and, you know, how deep it went or how, what the angle at which, don't just think about it, come back, be alert and come back to your ready position. And I was, as I was, you know, after this was many years ago, right? So as I was playing badminton, I just remembered that, you know, kind of saying, uh, remember that this, this thing coming back to me, after you hit the shot, come back to ready position, be alert, you know, because you're going to get ready for the next, um, what the opponent is, you know, uh, placing um, the the ball, placing the, uh, you know, the shuttlecock. So uh, come back to the ready position, be alert. Uh, so things like this, right? So uh, some very basic thing. It's a very basic step, but then it's very, very important. So we're going to look at some uh, keys to effective preaching. And um, I know that some of us are already in the, uh, uh, you know, doing this regularly, uh, maybe preaching, sharing the word in various settings. But uh, here are some, uh, you know, basic things. Maybe it's it's new for some of us, but, um, you know, let's, let's look at it, right? Okay. So uh, first thing is, of course, to pray. Okay, I'm on page 41. Maybe I'll just project this as well. Uh, just give me a minute. Is it coming up? Yeah, I think it's there. Okay. Right. So, um, so one of the things, the first thing is, of course, to pray, right? Um, because it's um, unlike any other, you know, uh, any other arenas in which we might speak. Um, when it comes to preaching, you're handling the word of God, and the objective is that, um, that you know. Many objectives, of course, that people will grow in the word. It could be people getting saved. Uh, if you're preaching the gospel, that people would get saved, their destinies will change, and so on. So um, it's not just a physical act. It's not just um, you know dispensing information, but it's good. you're doing something much deeper. Right? You're you're affecting the destinies of people, and it's a spiritual act. Uh, it's it's going to affect people in the spirit, and it's not just you alone. And it the, the transformation is from the Spirit of God, right? The, from the Holy Spirit is the one who's going to uh, affect that change or right in their hearts. Um, and and so uh, we need to pray. We need to pray in as part of the preparation and never forget that. Um, so our uh, preparation, our teaching and everything, we receive from him, therefore, the importance of prayer. Right? We pray for you know some things like we pray for the elimination of god's word that god will give us the understanding he'll give us the insight he'll give us the uh, burden for the people and uh, that our hearts will be right as well right um, so we pray for uh, even things like uh, the application the illustrations everything right cover the whole thing don't let anything be undone you know, how you want to start, how you want to, what you want to share, some illustrations, even if it's humor, just check with the Lord, ask the Lord, Lord, can I use this? What can I use, right? Um, let everything be covered in prayer. Okay. The second thing would be 
to pray for the utterance, for the delivery, um, the way you say it and what you want to say, um, just ask the Lord, Lord, you you give me the words, you give me utterance. Right? Paul asks uh, in one of his epistles, he writes and he says, you know, pray that um, that the Lord will give me utterance. Right? That um, so this is something which is scriptural. So you pray and we ask the Lord, Lord, um, you know, even beyond what I've prepared, not give me utterance. Give me some prophetic utterance. Give me some insight into the hearts of people. Right? And uh, and we ask the Lord. Uh, so we pray for that as well. And we pray for our audience. Pray for who's going to be listening. Right. Uh, it could be uh, people who know the truth. It could be people who, who are yet to come to the saving knowledge of, of Christ. So uh, pray, pray that the Lord will draw them. Pray that the Lord will, um, you know, go before and prepare their hearts. Pray that uh, um, that all kinds of confusion and all kinds of uh, uh, blockages, barriers will be taken away. Like, uh, there are so many things uh, which, um, uh, so many spiritual things that are affecting them, the powers of darkness, you know, tempting, distracting, accusing, and uh, really creating hindrance. So it's it's good to pray and come against all that, but the atmosphere you know, will be completely clear of all these disturbances and, and barriers and so on, right? So we pray for the audience, I pray that, um, uh, that they will be uh, uh, attentive, right? Pray for protection. Uh, again, this is... Uh, protection from distraction, accusation, uh, you know, for the meeting, right? Maybe uh, it could be the, the the physical arrangement of the meeting. You can pray for everything, pray for the power, pray for, uh, 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 pray for uh, the physical arrangement, pray for those things. You know, sometimes we realize that um, it's, it's like uh, there could be one small thing which can offset the whole thing, you know, it could be uh, one, uh, maybe an, an issue of power, maybe an issue of equipment failure. You know, God's grace will cover all that, right? Um, but it's it's good that we pray, preempt and pray, preempt and pray and say, Lord, you know, we want this to be going smoothly. So uh, we commit this into your hands, right? Um, um, I remember like in, in our, when we are setting up our Bible college for uh, one of the earlier venues, um, and then that's when I realized, you know, we should pray for our vendors, pray for those who are, uh, you know, not just for those who are teaching and preaching and uh, but uh, those who are in the, you know, the serving the team, but also those who are, you know, when the vendors and who are uh, taking care of other things, uh, external things of the project. So this was a man uh, who was uh, doing our fall ceiling and, uh, and also uh, I think he was in charge of uh, some kind of fixtures. So he was uh, fixing a leak actually. Um, so there was a false ceiling, there was a high roof, and he was fixing, and uh, that uh, roof was very old, and it, it was, uh, water had kind of seeped in, and it had made the whole thing weak. So he fell right through. It was a very tall ceiling, uh, and he fell from the ceiling, he fell through the false ceiling, uh, broke that, and fell, and thankfully nothing happened. Nothing happened, no bones broken, uh, nothing happened uh, except for those, you know, those uh, tiles which are broken and, and which we, anyway, we replace those and also the false thing, we replace those. But the fact is that, uh, you know, that these people need to be, and I was really thanking God, you know, uh, for that saying, God, thank you for preserving his life. Thank you for, you know, uh, thank you. Nothing happened. It, it was a couple of injections, you know, he was fine, you know, some something to take care of the pain and he was fine. Just getting back, uh, I think in a couple of days, he was back to normal. So um, things like that, you know, pray for everything, you know, whatever the Lord would bring to mind, you know, you can you can pray. Okay, say pray, when, you, when you're praying for protection, uh, you know, one of the things is that Satan accuses. Satan is an accuser. So um, when you, when you as a as a teacher or you as a speaker, uh, when you um, when you are preparing yourself, you know there's a lot of accusation that comes to your mind, right? Um, things like you know you are not worthy, you are not qualified. Uh, you know uh, how can you teach this? Um, you 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 are a hypocrite. You know, all kinds of accusations. Um, I, I, I remember, you know, all kinds of distractions would come, right? In the earlier days when I would um, just step up to the mic, you know, uh, this was my early days of just getting into church and ministry. And and so um, I remember you know, just stepping over, uh, up to the mic to just start the worship time, right? 
So, and then suddenly I would remember, hey, did I switch off the gas stove at, at home? Did I lock the car? Uh, it, all kinds of thoughts. Till then, you know, everything is clear. But I'm just stepping up and all kinds of distracting thoughts. Right? Then, I, then I realized that, hey, it's, it's, not, it's not me. You know, it's, uh, it's something else. It's, it's the enemy trying to distract. I had Satan trying to distract you, so don't don't worry about that. So then I, you know, I, I came to, I just made a decision, right? Okay, if these thoughts come, I'm not going to worry about that, right? Uh, and it's it's happening right there, just before starting to minister. So I just decided, oh, it's fine. If the gas is on, if the stove is on, it's fine. You know, by the time we go back, the whole cylinder will be empty. It's okay. Or, you know, even if the house is open and, you know, I didn't lock the car and things are missing, it's fine. Absolutely okay. You know, I just made up my mind and said, that's okay, fine. And then these things would stop. It just it just stopped. Um, so you realize that it's an attack from the enemy to accuse you to, uh, you know, sometimes the accusation is, you know, this is very, very practical, you know, things like, um, Hey, this this passage doesn't make sense, or, or this this seems very irrelevant. This seems too simple. This message is too simple. You know, why do you want to preach this? Right? People will not be interested. This is not going to help them. Right? And of course, you know, the Holy Spirit will lead us. Right? Holy Spirit will speak to us, but His voice or His leading is is it's just gentle. It's not accusing. It it could be convicting, but it's not accusing. Right, so um, we get to discern and decide, yeah, whose voice is it? And if it's the voice of the accuser, we, we disregard, we discard that. Right? Uh, Satan will also accuse the audience. You know, these people are not interested, or they hate you, or you know, from the audience perspective, you know, they don't esteem you, um, you know, they don't care about you, or all kinds of things. Right, so uh, you. You, you realize and then you you pray against that. You declare that and you say, okay, I'm a child of God. I'm a servant of the Most High God. And I, this is my call. God has called me to this. God has given me this privilege and opportunity to handle his word. And I will, and I will share no matter what. It doesn't matter. And I'm going with love of God in my heart. Uh, love for God, love for his people. And I will love these people, you know, as much as God loves them. And you just, you know, declare that, proclaim that, um, and you keep going. Okay. Okay. So second one is to, when you're making a statement, when you're making an important point, you know, when you're delivering a truth and uh, making a very conclusive statement and saying, this is so, we need to back it up with scripture. Right? Because this is what the word of God says. Right, when we make a statement. And why is that important? Because um, your, your reference point, our reference point, our plumb line is the word of God. Right? And um, so it's good to, you know, um, it, it's good to share with the audience. This is why I'm saying this. Right? Uh, I mean, we don't have to crowd our message or completely, you know, uh, uh, completely fill our message with, you know, it's like shooting scripture. Ta -ta 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 -ta. You know, we just start off with shooting people with scripture bullets. It's not that, but really um, backing it up and giving a foundation and saying, you know, and this is the reference point, right? And making a very important statement. And it's to, to make the distinction that it's not an opinion, that it's not a popular idea. It's not something that's, um, you know, it's, uh, it's not something that's cultural or traditional, but it's actually scripture right so you back it up with scripture and, sh and share that uh some practical things is uh, you know uh, it, to avoid uh, you know you don't have to go there i'll read it for you you know doesn't matter the minute we say it uh, you know some people want to read it in their own bible you know no matter how much you say uh, you know they want to read it they want to see it you know actually i'm like that um, I, I love the PowerPoint and, uh, you know, whatever is there on the screen, but I, I'd like to really read it there uh, in the Word so I can I can see it, you know. I don't know. It's, it's just a habit. You know, I want to turn. I want to see it. So there could be, I'm, I'm sure there could be people like that uh, uh, out there in the audience. So uh, so when you say don't turn, you know, they first of all feel a little guilty for turning and uh, they will turn anyway. They are, they are very curious. Why is he saying or why is she saying? Don't turn there. So, I mean, it's you can avoid that, right? Um, 
okay it's good to have both heat and light in the sense uh, both the uh, uh, the content uh, you know in terms of uh, uh, in terms of insight and application and also uh, the heat in the sense uh, this burden and application right so having both so when we say uh, if a teaching has heat then uh, and doesn't have enough light then it can become a little bit boring you know um because it doesn't have the insight it doesn't have the scriptural insight or revelation um and of course if if it has a lot of uh, applica- you know a lot of interpretation explanation um but it doesn't seem to come with that burden or heart um then uh it would also be become uh you know it 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 would it might seem very academic uh, in the first um at the first it might seem um you know uh, uh, uh yeah I, i think it might seem a little academic right so we can have both we need to have both okay third thing um for us to include humor because then the, you know we looked at this when we were uh, considering the Uh, sermon preparation right as one of the elements you could you know look at humor humor helps us just like illustration humor helps us to um, you know teach some of those things bridge some of those difficult things uh, etc or if we are you know teaching something you know which is uh, uh, very very uh, very very convicting very serious and um, well it helps to kind of change the atmosphere or break the ice even right um and it 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 does all this but um we should use humor sparingly and also in line with your personality you know uh well god has given you a personality i'm sure uh, like some of us are very very exuberant some of us are not so in line use humor in line with your personality right let it not be something out of place where people can't relate to and you yourself you know for you it's a, it's a put on rather than something that's that comes naturally right so we can use humor uh fourth one plan on a good level of content now this is where it helps uh, when it's a uh, uh, especially you know when we are looking at our presentations and we're saying um it's 12 minutes so i have this content before me i want to be able to share this now how can i do that in 12 minutes so you know so to kind of map it out and say uh I, this is what i'm going to say for you know as far as the introduction goes and i'm going to use this you know this 12 minutes in this way maybe i'll split it up as uh, six sections 2 minutes each or four sections 3 minutes each right or maybe it's good to have you know maybe for 11 and a half minutes and then use the use the rest for just winding up right those last 30 seconds or even the last 60 seconds just to wind up um to review to um to summarize and wind up so uh planet uh well okay um so uh we can we can plan it in sections um also while while we plan it um, but not to be really um so watertight that we don't allow you know especially i'm just talking about if there is a you know 30 minute 40 minutes or you're speaking going to be speaking for an hour uh we can plan it and also lay, leave some space for uh for the spirit of god to give us insights and something that is ex, uh, you know that extempore that uh, that happens there you know uh, and the lord will, will drop some thoughts and and you you can give some space for that as well okay, okay. um uh, some things to uh, here are some practical things um you know prepare well in advance because uh, otherwise there's a lot of anxiety um and if you're constantly making say, changes um you know it's it it's a cycle of anxiety it's a cycle of uh, uh, you know not being able to concentrate and uh, etc okay uh, one of the things that we can do is also check with someone else right if uh, if there's someone more experienced if there's someone um, you know uh, maybe uh, uh, someone in your team who's like a leader uh, 
can you can check and say okay you know how does this look do you think i can share this do you think it's okay theologically uh, you know is it sound you could check right uh, i know that you know we we may not always be able to do this but if there's an opportunity uh, maybe in the early days um of uh, you know us preparing and just getting into uh, this you know, we can use uh, this opportunity right and check with people uh, check with someone senior uh, it's always good to uh, have notes some people don't believe in notes or outlines uh, they you know, their mind is very sharp they have a good memory and uh, it's all there but um, um, i mean it's good to have some teaching outline uh, or not so we we cover entire we cover the entire thing right we don't leave out anything that god wants us to convey so we cover it right and uh, you know have it as an outline uh, and sometimes you know certain things happen and we certain i don't know something untoward happens or you know and our mind goes blank suddenly uh, and and you want to get back Uh, and an outline will always help a teaching note if you have that it will always help you right okay it's good to uh, look around the room uh, make eye contact with people um and uh, and not just rest on one person or one group just because they, you know they are nodding their head they are very attentive uh, it happens right it's it's just natural that well certain people are very Uh, expressive very attentive in the audience some are not you have all kinds a mix of all that and uh, our natural tendency is to is, is to be drawn to those who are very attentive and uh, uh, who are who are responding who and you know that they are actually receiving the message well so you know, we naturally turn to that and then we tend to ignore or make like the rest of the audience um so irrespective of what the response is you know sometimes it could be it be you know just uh, uh, a very inexpressive face right but that's okay you know it's okay to look to share to go through maybe a very indifferent expression expression maybe an angry expression but but you know keep keep going you know make eye contact with everyone um yeah um the other thing is a voice you know as much as uh, our content is important uh, but while we are delivering it you know the way we say it uh, really helps and i think i've shared uh, with you right after the message how a person came and shared saying you know your voice should go up and down there should be you know it should have uh, uh, you know there should be variation in the pitch otherwise you know you're putting me to sleep right so so they uh, when you're emphasizing certain things you know it, it's good to uh, it's good to vary the pitch whether it's sharp or loud or fast i mean loud or uh, soft or fast or slow and and so on right so uh, and the thing is that um, not all of us uh maybe aware of it when we speak it you know not all of us will uh, we maybe maybe we speak very less you know first off and we are not expressive in our speaking you know we may not emphasize certain things we may not uh like you know we may there may not be variations in our pitch uh, uh and so on so it's good for us to put these in practice even as we are having these conversations with people normally when we're talking if you if you're excited show that you're excited right and let your voice show it right and uh, you know i do these voice overs right and um, so in, in the voice overs you know i i try to smile at some of those some of the things you know if i'm saying welcome to all people's church you know and i notice that when i actually smile and read out a script it's it's very very different from when i don't smile and read out the same thing uh, there could be even uh, you know inflection in my voice i could be saying things welcome to all people's church but when i smile it and when i smile and say it, you know there is um, i i mean it right it's it seems so much better right so so that's the thing so the message becomes part of you and uh, you have to carry the burden and you and the message are one and when you begin to speak it out when you begin to say it, 
then it becomes, um, you know, your voice shows it. And it's good that it comes out in a natural manner, right? And uh, yeah, so here are some things to uh, keep in mind. Use clear words, right? And uh, find ways to emphasize certain words that you're saying. Um, just a minute, please. Just shut down the window. Um, find ways to emphasize certain things, right? Certain words, make some, you know, some statements, right? You can pause for emphasis, and uh, you know that'll that'll help. That that what is what what you're showing is that what you're saying, what you're conveying, is that something is important, right? When you say God is a good God, right? So people are noticing what you're saying. You know, rather than saying God is a good God, um, it depends on the content again. You know, we're not pausing at the wrong place. We're not pausing at good morning. <laughs> you know, that's the wrong emphasis and wrong wrong pause. So, uh, just an example. So, uh, you know, use pause, use repetition as well, right? Uh, not for the sake of repeating or when we keep repeating that it will actually wear down the audience, the listener. Just they get weary. You just go over it over and over again. And you're like, please move on. Right? I'm tired of listening to it over and over again. So um, uh, we need to repeat. And a repetition helps a recall. Repetition helps for emphasis. Repetition helps for, you know, uh, maybe they didn't notice the first time, but then they notice it the second time when you say it. And what you're saying is important, right? So you can use repetition as emphasis and gestures, of course. Um, and which we are going to talk about next, but gestures, you know, to um, to use your the rest of your body, to use your hands, to use your you know, if there is space to move around, to to walk, to move around, um, and 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 gestures help us. You know, actually, we we all of us use gestures. You know, it's very difficult to you know if you just put a you know tie you tie your hands and uh, ask you to read something which is very animated it's it's very difficult you know you will at least nod your head right you it, it's very difficult to not do all that because if you're not you know moving your head moving your hands um, and your speech changes and right? your speech changes you're not able to you know it, it's very difficult to express certain things so um so use that. Use your hands. Right? Move around. Gesticulate. You know, maybe you wave your hands around. Whatever. Now, normally they say the bigger the audience or the larger the audience, your gestures need to be, you know, so much um, kind of magnified, and you need to uh, do that. Um, but anyway. Um, so we can practice this in our normal conversations. They become part of us, and then you know when we're speaking, it just becomes part of us. Right? Uh, postures: don't slump or cover. You know, be relaxed, um, but be firm. You know, authoritative. Be confident. Right? Um, so gestures can be varied, appropriate, uh, and undistracting. You know, that that's the thing um, that we don't distract people from it. You know, because if it is too dramatic and too showy, then people are distracted. And, and also, you know, some nervous gestures, you know, like uh, um, you know, sometimes we fiddle with our button or we put our hands in our pocket and we are just you know uh, taking some stuff out, putting it back. Or maybe you have a pen, you're constantly taking that, clicking the pen, putting it back. Um, be aware of that. Right? Be mindful of that and avoid that when you are speaking. Yeah. Uh, here's a question from say, uh, there's a is there a difference between Bible study teaching for a church? Um, do you agree there's a difference between midweek Bible study and a sermon? So do you, how we can conduct effectively conduct and coordinate a Bible study teaching? Okay, yeah. So um, you know, in a, one is uh, less formal, right? Now it, it again depends. You know, uh, uh, even if it's a sermon, if it's a smaller gathering, I guess it depends on the size of the gathering. One, and uh, and also the kind of setting it is. You know, it could be um, right, a very formal thing. You know, there are churches where it's very informal, 
right? Um, and there's a lot of interaction, people asking questions, people, you know, answering from the audience. So it depends on that. But yes, um, yes, Ray, there is a, you know, there is a difference um, in the way we, um, you know, we, when we, uh, when it's a Bible study, when it's a, or when it's a sermon in a church, you know, the basic difference is, okay, there is a lot more interaction, there are a lot more discussion that's happening. So, so it doesn't make sense to be, you know, uh, very, very formal and then just addressing the crowd and just, you know, preaching something it doesn't make sense. Right. Um, whereas if it's a, if it's a, let's say Sunday morning service and there's a, there's a congregation of, let's say hundred, 200, whatever, then um, it doesn't really, the structure really doesn't help us to have a very informal uh, discussion and, and that, you know, considering the time, considering the content that you want to convey, etc. So we just go with, uh, you know, sharing the message and, you know, keep going. So there is a difference. So, so um, yeah, a session to conduct and coordinate. Okay, and maybe there is, there is something on, teaching which is coming up later so we could look at that also yeah before we wind up yeah thank you for that question okay um gestures facial expressions um and even the you know the physical things like uh, maybe you know if there's a podium you know sometimes we just tend to just lean heavily on it or you know maybe shake it or, you know, be mindful of that. And so people will, if there's family there, they will always come back and show, tell you that you shouldn't do that. Why did you shake that? I remember one Sunday after service, you know, my family is my greatest critique. And you're going back, uh, you know, my wife and daughter are there. And then they just, they're just bombarding me. Why did you say that? Why, why did you say that? You know, and why did you keep shaking the podium? Um, you know, you almost tilted it and you know, all kinds of, so these are good, good things, right? This is good feedback coming so we can be better. So uh, you can always improve. Uh, you can always, you know, have some people in the audience and say, you know, hey, just let me know. Uh, I, you know, if there's anything that I said that distracted you. Uh, I remember I was, I was, um, in one of the uh, messages, I I was, I think I was a little preoccupied uh, with something. So, um, uh, so I I said Jehovah Jireh, but what I really meant was Jehovah Rapha. <laughs> so I just kept saying Jehovah Jireh, and I was giving an explanation for Jehovah Rapha, right? Um, and then I, it was a smaller crowd, so. Um, yeah, right, Beth. So uh, it was a smaller crowd. So I just went back and I had all their numbers. So um, I went back and I just put it on the group and and to them personally, I said, I'm so, really, uh, you know, I just want to apologize for this. Uh, I'm sorry if I distracted you guys from the from listening to it because it's you know it's a it's a it's a glaring mistake. And um, and so you know I right. So um, so then I made a mental note, you know. To be to be there to be ever you know to be present there in the moment and not think of something uh and not be preoccupied with it stuff right so yeah so um anyway so expressions uh uh you know uh facial expressions uh even the physical things like uh, you know podiums etc and you can decide you know if it's going to be a like say he was asking about a, a home setting or a bible study or teaching kind of setting then well uh, don't have anything between you and the audience, right? Uh, don't have a table. Don't have a you know if there's or do you don't need to have something like a stand or a lectern. Just move it away so that you can just move freely uh, among the among the group, among the audience, and and uh, you know uh, it can help. Right? Okay, so um, I guess we what we'll do is we'll stop here. Um, we'll stop here and uh, and then we'll get back to this a little later. Um, okay, so we're on point seven. Okay. okay so today, um, so we'll we'll continue a little. Now, that is the first one, Abraham. So Abraham, if um, if you're ready, you could go ahead and, and present your sermon. Um, Twelve minutes. You can go ahead. Um, Abraham, yeah, okay.
Um, um, we, yeah, yeah, we can hear it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, is it okay? Right, right. Okay, okay, so, wow. Okay, let me get my PPT ready. Okay. PPT, PPT, PPT. Okay. All right, so is it okay to start now, sir? I'm ready now. My time starts now. Thank you so much, sir. Let's pray. Precious Father, we thank you for this very hour. Father, our hearts and minds are open to receive your word. Father, grant me the utterance that even as I share your word, it will make impact in the life of those who hear this word. In the name of Jesus, amen. This morning, I want to share on some few stuffs about God's love. And we are all here today because of God's love. When we talk about Christianity, Christianity is not a set of activities where prayer, fasting, and going to church becomes a normal routine where we lose the essence of the things that we do. The essence of who we are and what we do is centered on God's love. If we are not conscious of this love, we might not be able to love other people the same. In fact, the Bible shows us that we should keep ourselves in God's love. Whenever we talk about love, there are two aspects of love that I want to bring to your attention. The first one is love from the highest to the lowest. And you can see that love between a father and a son, where the father expresses a, a kindness, patience, and all those stuff that we find in 1 Corinthians 13, four to eight. Then the other aspect of love is love from the lowest to the highest, where we find Jesus showing us that we should, if you love me, obey my commandments. So the love that a son expresses towards his father is to love and obey his father by obeying him. Now, when we look at John 3.16, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. This verse shows us three important things. The first one is the purpose of God. That is the reason. The reason is because God is a being of love. The, the word used there is for God so loved, which makes God a being of love. Then the second thing is will. That is a desire. God had a desire, and his desire was to give us eternal life. Then the third one is plan. The plan in order to for us to get eternal life, is to send his son, Jesus, to die for us. When we focus on John 3.16, the main purpose of who we are now in Christ is because God is a being of love. And his purpose for saving us is also because of his love. This makes love ultimate. In fact, we find from 1 Corinthians 13, verse 3, which says, if I give all my possessions to the poor, if I surrender my body to be burned, and do not have love, it profits me nothing. The word nothing really means nothing. So this should help us to understand that love precedes everything we do. And my message today is God's love towards us. I want us to look at God's love towards us so that we can love other people the same way. Now, whenever we look at love, we know that there are five love languages. But the language of God's love is giving. Giving is what sets God apart. His ability to give is beyond comprehension. We can find that reference from Romans 5 verse 7, which gives us an example that a good man, someone might will be willing to die for a good man. But for a bad man, it will be difficult to get someone to die for the person. Where the Bible shows us in verse 8 that God proved his own love towards us that whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. My main text for today is based on 1 John 4 verse 10, which says, this is love, not that we love God, 
but he loved us and he sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sin. I read again. This is love. 1 John 4 verse 10. This is love, not that we love God, but he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sin. Now, the word that differentiates the love of God is the word not that we love God. This word expresses the kind of love that God has towards us. It expresses the unconditional love of God. The love which is independent of actions or circumstances. This is an everlasting love. That love does not change because of what you do or what you don't do. That is what we call the agape love. That is selfless and sacrificial love. That is a love without conditions. Love without limit. We have other forms of love, which we have the romantic love, we have the friendship love, we also have love which exists between family members. But the statement that I want to emphasize is not that we love God. This statement shows us that man was in a state of rebellion. Man was in a state where he had no value for God. Man was in a state where he thought God had abandoned him. He was in a state where he thought that God never cared about him. But even in the state where we thought that was the end, the Bible says that God loved us and God wanted to express this kind of love towards man. And he wanted us to know that even in that state, I am a being of love and I love you. And this happened because Jesus gave us his son to die for our sins. But, there be, but a big question here is, God could have sent an angel to die for us. God could have done something else in order for us to receive salvation because God is supreme. In his sovereign, he can do something for us to receive salvation. So why Jesus? The Bible shows us that Jesus is the fullness of God. He's the fullness of the love of God. He is the image of the invisible God, which means that if God had given us an angel, that would have been less of his love for us. If God had done something else in order for us to receive salvation, that would have been less of his love for us. So an angel wouldn't have quantified his love for us. Jesus made this statement that he said, no greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. We also find in John 17, 23, which he says that, that the world may know that you have loved them even as you have loved me. Jesus wanted us to know that the love that the father had towards him is the same love that he had towards us. It means that God loved us so much that God gave us himself. And that, the Bible says that this is the greatest kind of love that any man can receive. The Bible also shows that, that behold, what manner of love that the father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Brothers and sisters, we have been loved that much. So we need to reciprocate this love by expressing this same kindness to other people. But the key question here is that, what is our response towards God's love? If we have been able to establish the fact that God's love is beyond what I did yesterday, is beyond what I'll do tomorrow, is beyond what I'm doing, then what should be my response to this kind of love? You know, many people are living for themselves because they have taken the love of God for granted. Many people have not considered the love of God. Many people don't even know the love of God. But we find in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 13, which I read, it says, For the love of God constrains us because we have concluded this, that one died for all, that all died, all have died, that all died for all, that he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and raised again. The key point here is that he said, for the love of God compels us. The love of God regulates us. The love of God controls us. The love of God shows us how to live, how to act, how to think. Because they have concluded this matter. The reason why the love of God was compel compelling them is because they have concluded on the matter that Jesus died for them. And because of this, they will live their lives for Jesus. But interestingly, the word used there means krino. And that's the Greek meaning of the word conclude. It means krino. It means to separate. It means to pick out. It means to choose. It means that these people came to the point where they considered option A and considered option B. And they made a choice. The Bible says that I have set life 
and death before you, but choose life. In other words, we have a choice to make. And this choice can only happen if we come to a conclusion that this is who I'm supposed to be. This is who God has done for me. And this is how I'm going to respond to this. So there's a conclusion to make as children of God. There's a conclusion to give us what we deserve and what we want. The other word for krino means logizomai. It means to reckon. It means that these people reckon that their life here on earth is for Christ. And so nothing else will move them. Nothing else will cause them to live another life that is not in the scriptures. So love has nothing to do with other people. Love has to do with who you are. Love has to do, be, do with our essence, our being. So we are not supposed to limit God's love to what people do. We are not supposed to limit God's love to what people say about us. We are too nice to work in unforgiveness. We are too nice to be selfish. And the fact is, if you forgive someone, you are actually forgiving yourself. If you love someone, you are actually expressing who you are. So who we, who we are is actually for us to love like Jesus. Because Jesus gave us another commandment that you should love one another even as I have loved you. It means that you love that is selfless. Love that has no condition. That has no condition of what my, my brother did to me yesterday or what somebody said to me yesterday. Those things doesn't matter. What matters is that the love of God is greater than all these things. So we should love people beyond their mistakes. We love people beyond the things they do. We should see Christ in everyone and Christ in every situation. We should focus on the good things in other people. This is the only way that we can love other people like Christ loved us and Christ loved the church. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Abraham. Good to see you finally. You were just a DP on the screen. <laughs> now we know what you look like and what you sound like. Okay. Good, good. Thank you. Um, uh, just a, a quick question. Did you want to put the PowerPoint? Because we, uh, you know, we just saw your video and oh, okay. not the PowerPoint. So uh, I'm not sure if you wanted to put the PowerPoint. Did you? No, no, I didn't want to put it. Oh, you didn't really want to. Okay, that was just for your reference. Okay, okay. Yes, good, good, good. Okay, very nice. Thank you. Uh, we'll come back for more feedback. So we'll take a break. Uh, okay. we'll come back at 10.04, okay? 10.04, okay. we'll come back and then we'll, yeah. Thank you.